So we have been working with the government for many many years now, advocating uh, the need to shift the age criteria for some of our primary years, because we've always felt as a school that children are being rushed into the formal education system. And I'm really glad and thankful that finally the government has a policy which is in sync with brain research. Uh, what it means practically for us is that we are able to spend one more additional year in this critical hour of child development. Like I shared earlier, by age six, it is a golden hour of human development because the brain learns the fastest by age six. Uh, and one year there will have significant opportunity for us to do more deeper work with our children and the results of which will be seen uh, all through their adult life, not just now. So in early childhood, what really happens? This is the time when creativity is developed. This is the time when we have to work on memory, concentration, on the values, on the work habits. And if we replace all of this with academic learning, aren't we taking away the very roots that becomes the basis of a good foundation for the development for the latest, later stages of life? Uh, ECC has its own work to do and all it requires is time and a very well curated environment because children, they are absorbent. They have absorbent faculties and they are learning. So if they are learning all the time, we need to make sure that the environment around them is conducive for their learning. And another thing that we also need to really focus on is their relationships with adults. So the adults around them also have to be really worthy of imitations with this understanding that they are absorbing from us all the time. They're looking at us for answers and we are showing them a way to be. Children who spend more time in the primary years, they tend to uh, develop social skills such as communication, collaboration, conflict management. As they grow up, they are more independent, self-reliant. Uh, they develop a positive relationship with their peers, with adults and society at large. So the 10 plus 2 to me suggested that learning is seen as one big block um, when actually we know that it's not. We know that the needs of a student in the first five years are very different in the next three years, in the next three years and in the next four years. Um, their needs are different and therefore their, uh, their provision needs to be different. The way in which we train teachers needs to be different. Um, it shouldn't really be seen as a continuous journey in terms of uh, the student will always be the same. They won't. We know that they mature at different rates. We know that different things happen cognitively. So it's really a good recognition that different things, different diets of learning are needed at different ages. And I'm actually very happy to see this break up, if you like. I feel in some ways uh, NEP is almost tailor-made for heritage. I think by design it supports already what heritage is, heritage is doing and uh, a lot of principles are embedded in, in our work. Um, I'll talk about three um, essentially. The first one is experiential learning. Um, the NEP promotes, the NEP advocates that experiential learning is, is really critical for children, especially of this age. Heritage uh, philosophy is experiential learning. So the way we teach children, our pedagogy, the core of our pedagogy itself is experience. Um, now experience takes time to weave into all areas of development and that's how we work with every child. That's how we work on our every lesson. Uh, our lessons are not uh, delivered as content. Our lessons are experiences which, which help children to build their skills, build connections and hone their schemas. The second aspect is um, the integration. So whether it's units of inquiry or theme-based learning or expeditions, uh, in whichever framework we are working, all the subjects and domains of learning come together. So it, it's not that we are paying attention to only cognitive or we are paying attention to only one thing. Their social emotional development is interwoven in their math, in their literacy, in their EVS. Everything comes together and that's the right way in which brain develops as well. So that's another, another point. 
the third uh, one and i think is one of the core things uh, core aspects of heritage is uh, understanding the swabhav of each child uh, being able to observe uh, having the time and having the uh, consciousness to observe the journey and pathway of every child and uh, knowing that every child will grow differently what works for one learner might not work for the other and therefore how can i curate different learning pathways for each child that's something that i'm very very hopeful about so the more we provide that space the more we give them opportunities the better learners they become they become more confident they their uh, age appropriateness of the uh, experiences makes more meaning and nep has done that wonder which we've always been dreaming of which is the gift of time so having these three foundational years before the child moves to grade 1 is i would say like a blessing that has come to childhood uh -huh.